So right here, you're looking at one of the most important things um, for turtles housed outdoors in the winter when it gets really, really cold. And that is keeping your surface agitated, keeping your water oxygenated um, so that when it does get cold and that ice starts to form, this will be the last place um, where it starts to, to ice over. And here in the south where I live, uh, where these water outputs are, shouldn't completely freeze. Uh, we'll take a look tomorrow morning um, we're gonna get down into the teens tonight and tomorrow morning. So I'm hoping that this will help keep these 300 gallon and 600 gallon stock tanks from freezing. Uh, right here, this is, you know, for the alligator snapping turtles. These guys are cold hardy and um, really not affected too hard by the cold. I'm making sure today that there is gonna be plenty of, you know, surface agitation and oxygen in the water because it's gonna get as cold as it's gonna get for us, you know, where I live. So you're looking at, you know, the teens is about as cold as it ever gets in Georgia, and it's gonna do it for the next two nights. So it's not gonna be fun. Turtles are definitely not gonna love it, but at least this gives them a chance to stay warm. And then another thing I do is I like to pile up the leaves around the um, bottoms of the stock tanks. It adds a little bit of a thermal layer. Um, if you have stock tanks outside, you can also add blankets and stuff around the outside edges of your tanks. That also works, I've seen people do that. Uh, but for right now, uh, just made sure my water is running good on both of these tanks. I'm actually going to pull this board back just to maximize the amount of sun that's going to be hitting this tank. And hopefully, you know, when we come back and check on this tomorrow, uh, we should have at least two spots of no ice. And at the very minimum, if it is iced over, there's going to be plenty of oxygen in this water for these turtles to slow down their heart rate and absorb oxygen through the skin in their neck and in their cloaca and doing their natural snapper thing. But right now they're kind of moving around in here a little bit, getting comfortable, and they know that the cold is coming. All right, here we are the next day. Plenty of snow on the ground, really a light dusting. And underneath the ice, you can see painted turtle there. Over there, clinging to that log, is a Mississippi map turtle. There's a cooter under there. So these guys are safely under the ice, just uh, absorbing some oxygen and waiting for that ice to thaw later today, especially once the sun hits it. The Aquascape Pond is looking epic. All that snow kind of sitting on some of the plants. Looks pretty neat. It's like kind of like a mountain stream now. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And because most of this water is, is running underground at any given time, um, the water actually stays a bit warmer and never really freezes. So that's actually pretty cool. We'll go back here. We're gonna take a look at these two tubs we set up for the snapping turtles. Nice little walk in the snow. Don't get to do this very often in Georgia. Now, just like we had talked about yesterday, some of this water is gonna freeze. Yep. Ice there, but over there, that hasn't frozen and maintained you know, some oxygen going into here. Same over here, we've got a half sheet of ice and this water is still you know, flowing and keeping it from freezing. So that's pretty good. 
Both of these actually came out just how I wanted them to. So I'm pretty stoked on that. Uh, it's all about going back inside and staying warm. So all the turtles that are outside are doing fine. Everything went as planned. And that's just how it goes. So yeah. So we're on the other side of a bunch of really cold days, really cold nights, and I'm kind of going around and seeing, and right here it looks like we have a snapping turtle buried into the mud. Sometimes they'll actually leave the water when it's cold and then bury on land. Um, so it's actually pretty warm, so it shouldn't bother this turtle too much just to check on it. I just want to make sure it's, you know, doing okay. Um, it did get pretty cold, so we're just gonna try and gently lift this one up. Yep, we have some movement here on the tail. A lot of mud and stuff on it. And look at that. Common snapping turtle buried in the ground. I'm just gonna put it back as I found it. And it can go back to how it is. Uh, right now we're in like the, the mid to high 50s and overnights are only in the 40s. So this turtle's fine. Um, I did just want to dig it up and check on it. It's doing just fine. Um, we'll cover it back up with some leaves and some substrate. And it's good to go. Really common to find mud turtles and stuff like this. Because they'll, they're really comfortable being on land. Um, even during non-cold months of the year, mud turtles will go up on land and find places to sit on land for you know long periods right here by this old filter just as i suspected uh, there is what looks like a mud turtle Let's see how this guy's doing yeah got a male mud turtle just sitting right here he was active he's right on the surface he's doing good um inside here little bunker i'm sure there's probably another mud turtle in there it could be even some hatchling box turtles in there as you've seen in my last couple videos the cooters do come out of the water and they do you know just fine they handle the cold just fine and they take advantage of these nice sunny days bask get their temperature up and pretty much you know laugh it off all right, so you saw a snapping turtle that was buried on land and had gone through the cold on land. And then this is one uh, that had handled, you know, a little bit of cold. This actually brought this one in on the coldest days. Um, but, you know, whether a snapping turtle is from Florida or from, you know, Kentucky, they can handle some cold weather. And these guys really just handle it just fine. Uh, they, you know, they get inactive and slow down and kind of shut down and under the coldest weather. But I've seen them move around under ice here in Georgia in the wild. I've seen them move around on, under ice in videos. And, you know, I've seen, you know, ones here at the house also um, move around under ice. Over here in the Aquascape Pond, the water's actually really, really low. Um, these dry times of year with all the wind and cold weather, uh, evaporation is really, really high. So it's dropped my water level and I just allow it to happen uh, because it, that's what's naturally happening you know everywhere in nature is your water levels are going to fluctuate so I allow it to happen and I let this fill back up with rainwater. Uh, but for right now I'm going to look around and see if we see any turtles active in here. I've seen signs of turtle activity and yesterday I saw one of the striped neck musk turtles in here. But there are so many little cracks and crevices in these rocks and striping moss turtles are probably one of the best at utilizing that type of uh, structure and places to hide. How cool is this? This is one of the neat things about the papyrus is these leaves when they bend down and touch the water will grow a new plant. And you can see this one fell over here and where it's touched the water, this section here, this plant, has roots going down into the bottom, so there's going to be a new papyrus growing out of the water right there. So um, that'll look kind of cool. If it looks like it'll be a problem or ain't going to work, then I'll move it. But yeah, I kind of like the idea of that, like a little water growing plant 
kind of right here in this section. I, d I really want all of this to be as natural and progressive on its own as, as possible. Lots of sun on the alligator snapping turtle stock tanks. You can see the log kind of moving. So they've actually been really active. When that sun hits these ponds, it really warms this water up and these guys will start moving a lot. Uh, over here, this is the one with Tony. And I know that every time I have looked in here, he's been in a different spot. His tail there, so his head's over here. We'll try and do the thing where I dip the iPhone in. He is right. There he is. Now I did get a chance to check on the female yesterday. Um, there's also a male in here. Let's see if we can maybe get a chance to check on that one. Oh yeah, here we go. This is a big carapace right here. You can see the keels running right there. Let's see if we can get a look at this one. Oh, there we go. That's a big one. Wow, look at that head. And he is doing just fine. Heavy as can be. That is a big turtle. We're gonna put him back. All right, so right here, I'm gonna check. We'll see if we can see a Gulf Coast box turtle. This looks like a place where they would have buried in during the cold, where I piled these leaves up nice and high. So there's some of the ground there. Let's see. I believe under here somewhere was a Florida box turtle. Let's see. Just gonna gently pull and tug until we see exactly where they might have moved to. Yeah, and box turtles will bury themselves underground and then they'll actually move a little bit underground as they need to where uh, maybe water drains or the temperature is a little bit warmer in one direction underneath this stuff and so they will adjust throughout the winter leave that alone we'll try this bottom corner just for fun ah, i think we got somebody yep here we go right there that is a Gulf Coast fox turtle. So that is the one I believe named Rosie uh, that I got from a lady. And just a beautiful Gulf Coast box turtle. And this is her little winter spot. Um, and you can see she's underneath all of this, underneath, I would say five, maybe even six inches of cover when I move this back and doing fine under there. Uh, it's damp, but not too damp, not enough to freeze. You can see she, you can see her move a little bit um, when I touch her. That's the hinge opening and closing, causing her her whole body to move. So I'm gonna go ahead and gently put this back. Again, the only reason I'm messing with these turtles that are already buried is because right now it's so warm, um, their, their activity level is slowly starting to pick up and it's not gonna drop to so cold that if they get um, a little bit woke up, they're not gonna be you know, in any danger. Again, here's a male Gulf Coast box turtle. Looking good. We'll push that back. Kind of pack it down as it was. And that's about all I really need to mess with. So the Gulfs are doing great. They're really cold hardy box turtles. I almost never have to worry about them going through the winter. And it's really interesting because they're native to south of where I live, but um, they're just really hardy. Do see it looks like somebody had buried around. Yeah, so I wanted to give you guys a quick iPhone vlog style video. Uh, just let you know what's going on here, the things that I've been kind of checking on. As you can see, my yard is about ready to be mowed and we're starting to get, you know, February here in Georgia is the last real winter month. And then as we get into March, that's when you start planting and preparing for spring, uh, working on habitats and all of that. So we're almost there. We're almost to the time when things are really gonna start coming back. So I'm really excited about it. I'm excited that the weather is finally picked up. Uh, it's no longer 28 degrees outside. We're in the mid to high 50s. And um, so herping's gonna pick back up and things here at the house are gonna pick back up. Uh, so thank you guys for watching this video. Appreciate all of you. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you don't miss any more uploads. I don't know if you've missed them or not, but I don't want you to. I want you to see all of them. Leave a positive comment and I'll give you a shout out in the next video. Appreciate you guys. Peace.